In this video, I want to talk a little bit about how to build stuff. Um, there are two ways to build. One is with a hammer, and two is with a construction vehicle. Um, for some things, you must use a hammer, and for some things, you must use a construction vehicle. So I've cruised up here. This is a skirmish map, and I'm right here in this area in Milo Wood, just above home base. And I want to just put a couple of minor defenses up here and a, a observation tower, or not an observation tower, but a watchtower as well. So the things you need to construct are B mats or basic materials and R mats or refined materials. So with what we're doing right now, only B mats are required. So I'm going to start with a watchtower. For that, I need 60. So I'm going to go. Where do I want to put this? Actually, I think I want to put this just... No, actually, I think I want to put it right here, close by. So I already have the hammer in my one slot. I hit number one to equip it. And I'll face the direction. It doesn't really matter which direction you face. Hit B, and you'll see all of the various items that you can construct, uh, such as a watchtower, some razor wire, you can actually construct a barracks with just a hammer. It's a smaller, much smaller base. Fence, a construction vehicle, foxhole, gate, pillbox, actually in this case a light pillbox, some sandbags, a howitzer. In this case you need a construction vehicle, and it even states requires construction vehicle. Storage box, and an encampment, which also requires a construction vehicle. So I'm going to go with a watchtower. Note that it says 75 meter to nearest base. That indicates that this will, you can prevent it from decaying. If it turns red, it means you can't place the object. You can, you know, this fence is in the way, for example. In this case, I'm in the way, possibly these cliffs as well. So I can place it right about here. You can right click and then move your mouse to rotate the orientation. And then when you're done, release right click and then left click to designate where you want it to be and then run up and left click to hammer and uh, if you don't do this within a certain number of seconds then the structure will disappear however once you get at least one hammer in it'll stay there until it's finished or until it's destroyed and then you just keep hammering until the construction is completed in this case, a watchtower requires uh, 60 basic materials, so that means you have to whack away 60 times. And it's done. Now if we hit map and zoom in, it's not yet appearing. Here we are. Here's our truck, and now it just appeared, and now it's also showing us our transparent view distance. So. I want to provide a little bit of protection for it so a warden can't just run up and, and easily destroy it. So, uh, or the enemy rather. If, you're, if, you're, if you are a warden, then you don't want the colonial doing the same thing. This is actually a bit of an awkward spot. I think it needs some defenses here and over here. Uh, in reality, you'll be spamming foxholes all over the place if you like to build but I'm sort of micromanaging this particular build for the case of the video. I think what I want to do is, if you look at the map, we can see that if, if we get hit from this end, it's probably going to be a flank from this direction and then sort of down. So I think it would be better to have defenses here immediately rather than over here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a pillbox on this side of the tower. So I need 75 B mats and I only have five left over so I'm going to run back up to the transport vehicle that I also sometimes mistakenly call truck and I'm going to go ahead and grab some B mats and then walk back down here here and I'm going to place a pillbox and face it in this general direction in this general direction right about here I think would be good so here's the pillbox um, it in this case you want to see that 98 you want to see a value to nearest base base indicator 
because that lets you know whether or not this is going to be activated. Pillboxes and foxholes and other defenses will fire automatically even if no one is in them. However, um, if it's not near enough to a base, then then it won't activate. Uh, I, I could move up here to... Actually, I think that's simply too far away. I don't know if I want to walk all the way out to illustrate. I guess I will. I'll just pause it. So in this case, the base that this is attached to has a distance of 150 meters. So right at 149, it will still be active. And right at 150, it will no longer be active. I can still build it. Someone can still jump in it and shoot from it but it will not have an auto turret that will fire on its own. And the base in question is this one right here. These tend to have a greater distance than the encampments do. I believe the encampments have a distance of activation of uh, 75 meters, and these town, uh, town halls have a distance of 150. But I don't want it quite this far out immediately. That would be good for perhaps a secondary perimeter if we wanted to do that but initially you want to start with more of an interior perimeter someone's been building over here too uh, I'm not sure if this is the best decision because the most immediate threat would be from this side of the base so I think it'd be more prudent to build up this side first and then this side but I'm not going to I'm not going to go chase down whoever that is and tell them there are lots of build strategies involved I'm not trying to explain all of the various options you have. I'm just trying to give you the basics right now. And then over time, you'll come up with uh, some strategies of your own. Let's see, where are we? Okay. All right, there's the watchtower. I think we want to go right about here with the pillbox. This will be a good enough distance to where if they come from this end, they're either going to have to flank or deal with this before they can get to that tower. Of course, you know, this is only covering one. Sometimes you're not, sometimes it's too low, so come over to the side if that's the case. And the reason it wouldn't let me hammer over here is because it's sunken a bit into the ground. And so it simply didn't register while trying to construct it. If that's the case, just move over to the side where you can see more of the pillbox exposed and you'll be able to build it. Now the pillbox only fires in uh, basically this direction. It cannot be fire, it won't fire from the rear and it will also not allow you if you enter it to fire from the rear. I'll illustrate that in a minute. And just a few more hits and this will be complete. And we have a pillbox. To enter this pillbox, all you would do is step up next to it and hit Q. You can enter it and then equip a weapon. Let me load it real quick. And then just as you normally would, right click to aim down range and then right and then left click whenever you want to fire at something. This gives you a lot of protection. Um, uh, people can't just shoot at you in here and kill you. They would have to destroy the pillbox or uh, throw a gas grenade at you. So if you want to stay, if you want to hold your ground while inside a pillbox or a foxhole, it's a good idea to have a gas mask as well so you can't be, so you can't easily be killed while still in the pillbox. Then to exit, you just hit Q again and you'll pop right out. Now, I mentioned that with a pillbox, it only fires forward into the side. So you can actually see that if you go inside and then, and then if I if I left click to aim, you can see I'm getting a white line here and a red line here. So there's no possibility. Uh, so I can aim up here. I'm actually not going to hit my target. I'm getting a red X at the end of my line of sight. But I'm looking at the line mostly. So once it turns red, there's it, it simply cannot aim. It, that's roughly the same, uh, roughly the same line of sight that a pillbox has. It's generally from here to here and there is no way to shoot from behind and it will not automatically shoot from behind either. If you happen to come across a pillbox, friendly or enemy, and you're not sure if it's activated or not to fire automatically, just look at the flag. 
this is how a larger flag appears, so you know it's active. A smaller flag indicates inactive. Now due to the reason that this pillbox will only fire basically forward, it's easy to simply flank it and come in between it or come behind it and then destroy it from the rear without risk of getting hit by it. So one common strategy is to toss up a foxhole behind it. Foxhole isn't as um let me see. A foxhole isn't as, as strong as a pillbox, but it does fire in three hundred and sixty degrees, provided there isn't something blocking its view. So that makes it a good choice to place behind the fo or the pillbox. So the pillbox requires 75 B mats, and the foxhole requires only 50. I'm going to right click to rotate to, I think this is the rear. Actually, no, maybe this is the rear. This equipment that you see on the side is generally considered to be the rear of it. I'm going to orientate it about like so, right next to this tree. Come over to the side and build this. Okay, one BMAT left, and the foxhole is completed. And just like the uh, pillbox, you can simply run up to it and hit Q to enter. I'm going to equip my gun, and you can see we now have a white line all around. We have 360 degree coverage, and it will also auto fire in 360 degrees. In addition to the foxhole, you can you can uh, also upgrade it to a gun nest. To do that, you equip your hammer, run up to it, and then you would you would press E. However, in this case, uh, we're on a skirmish map and we're not able to to upgrade these. Uh, the pillbox requires, I think, an additional 120 B mats to upgrade it. Uh, it's a, it just make, gives it more of a concrete shell, it makes it much harder to destroy. And to upgrade the foxhole to a gun nest requires, I think it's 50 R mats. And if you're in the main war um, and you can't upgrade, it simply means that um, uh, you don't have the tech research yet, I think. So checking the build uh, menu again, there are some things missing from here, and you won't see them until they get unlocked by tech. One of them is um, a sunken pillbox, which is pretty resilient. It can it can take up it takes a lot of effort to, or it takes a lot more effort to destroy them. Let me see how much uh, I have. I have quite a few B mats. I have enough to build another fox a foxhole, but I want to show you just a little bit of. Um, of a sandbag build here. Sandbags are useful early game, uh, as is the uh, razor wire. Actually, the bobbed wire comes in really handy because basically it doesn't stop people from running through, but it really slows them down to the point to the, where they want to avoid it. And um, you get about this much coverage with it. So, so for example, if I was concerned with someone running up this direction and I didn't have and I didn't have defense coverage, I could just lay down some some razor wire here. Of course, in this case, they could walk right around on this rock, but maybe then I have something over here that would shoot at them if they did that. So you can use this razor wire or barbed wire to basically direct troops, infantry, to where you want them to enter from, thus creating kill boxes and that sort of thing. It doesn't stop vehicles, though. Vehicles can just run right over it, no, no problem at all. But in this case, I want to build just a little defense using sandbags. So um, sandbags can be quite useful. They can't be placed on rocks. They need to be on ground. So you notice here I get a little bit of red. Does I don't get the correct color until right about here. I'm going to rotate it slightly and bring it over. Put it down as far as I can, right about there. And it only takes 10. If I, can, if I can hammer it, it only takes 10 B-mats to build up a one-level sandbag. And then if you want to upgrade it, you simply run up to it and hit E, and then it will upgrade to a taller version. Now, you can't actually shoot over 
the taller version. So a taller version can be used to block incoming small ammo or a small type of ammo rounds. It's not effective against vehicles. Vehicles can literally just hit this and destroy it. However, if you place another sandbag directly behind it, rotate it to get it at the same angle and get it as close as you can, And I usually like to do two of these because it's kind of awkward sometimes trying to climb up just one of these. I have enough for another one. So I'll do one more. Get it as close as I can. And now I can run up and hit space to climb up. If you go too far, just back up a little bit. And now I'm just I'm just I'm just looking over. And if I equip my pistol, you can see the sandbag in front of me is not blocking me. I'm getting blocked over here because of the this area of the rock, but I can actually have pretty decent line of sight here with my pistol. I can see all the way down here. So I have both elevation and protection in front of me. And if I hit C to crouch, I am now protected uh, even more. So if someone comes up, I can fire a couple rounds and duck down. Maybe I need to reload or switch weapons or something like that. And uh, uh, to create a nice little box, you would simply grab another one of these and bring it out to maybe about there. And then build that and then another one over here. About so. If I can get it just right. I'm a bit OCD on these. Something like that. And then if I if I finish those and upgrade them to taller ones, then you have yourself a nice little box that you can come into or others can come into and fire. You'll see variations of this, some quite large sandbag designs and some small ones like this. And I don't have, I don't think I have enough BMATs to finish it, but I think you get the idea. Let me, uh, can't get through there, I guess I'll climb over. I don't think I have any BMATs left in here. Nope, I don't. So I'm not going to be able to finish that, but I think you get the basic idea. And by combining this with foxholes and upgrading foxholes to gun nest and building pillboxes and upgrading those, you can basically create what is known as fortifications. You can also build walls. Uh, on skirmish maps, you can pretty much only build though uh, fences. They're not, they're not that, they're not that great, really. They can just, you can just drive into them to destroy them and you can still fire through them. So a fence really only prevents someone from moving through it. It doesn't really stop you from getting hit. So you don't really see this used that often on skirmish maps. However, later on, as you unlock tech, you can upgrade these the same way you do other items. You simply run up to it and you hit E, and uh, eventually you can build some pretty strong walls, and you can even eventually build bunkers into those walls. So all of these items together is, is how you would fortify a town or fortify an area on the map. And if you do start to build something and you decided, oh, I, I didn't really want that, you can usually you can just shoot it to destroy it like that, since I only hammered it once. And if there's anyone local here, they might be hearing that and wondering what's going on. But... I don't see anyone except for someone over here. Okay, so what needs to be done? I'd like to demonstrate the construction vehicle next, but I don't see uh, an immediate opportunity. So I think what I'll do is I'll save that for the next video.